I was in a state of disbelief. Uh, we were uh, we were marching. We were like an army that was taking one square after the other, one square after the other. I was detained and tortured by state security police when when Mubarak was in power. Of course, I don't want to return to these days. We deserve better than those military uh, generals and their sons and their daughters. It's been 10 years since Egypt's 25th of January revolution, the uprising that ousted President Hosni Mubarak. Likened to a modern day pharaoh, Mubarak had ruled Egypt for nearly 30 years with an iron grip. Hossam al Hamalawi is an Egyptian journalist and socialist activist. He was a leading voice during the revolution. Uh, I would be lying to you if I, um, if I told you that um, uh, I knew that this was the start of the revolution. I think most of the participants and the organizers uh, of the event or of the protests on that day uh, did not have um, such a high target of overthrowing the regime. Uh, the main demands that uh, had been agreed upon on that day uh, were the impeachment of Habib al-Adli and uh, calling into account um, or holding accountable the police officers who were involved in, uh, in torture in general and in the murder of uh, Khalid Saeed in specific. And, and by night, that's when things started to completely change. By night, you I mean, the whole square was full of people. Um, and my, my feeling was that if, if these protests continue till Friday, if we manage to sustain the mobilization till Friday, then we can start talking about a revolution. On the 27th of January, Mubarak's government cut off nearly all access to the internet. It also ordered the shutdown of mobile phone networks. These attempts to stop protesters from organizing failed. The next day, after Friday prayers, hundreds of thousands assembled in Cairo and other cities around Egypt. And I just looked behind me and I was like, oh my God, you know, I mean, I couldn't see the end. Uh, of the masses at the time and I remember I like I ran quickly uh, on top of a pedestrian bridge uh, in Demerdesh so as to look and th these were like the biggest and the most huge crowds I've ever seen in my whole life in Egypt at least so I, I mean I was crying to be honest I mean I, I was crying not just because of tear gas but I was crying because um, I felt that all of those years, when you lived in fear, when you lived every night expecting the door, uh, a knock on your door, um, and then state security police would come in and snatch you. I mean, all, all of these memories, you know, I mean, were just like running like a film reel in front of me um, in a few seconds. Yeah, I mean, this was the day when we really felt like, you know, I mean, empowered. The demonstrations turned violent as police forces fired tear gas, water cannons, rubber bullets, and live ammunition at unarmed protesters. But as the day progressed, the police found themselves retreating in the face of determined crowds. I was in a state of disbelief. Uh, we, were, uh, we were marching, we were like an army that was taking one square after the other, one square after the other. Um, you know, it's, it's a long way from Nasr city all the way to Tahrir. Um, and we were basically grabbing control of the squares from the central security forces uh, after fierce fights and uh, you know with tear gas rubber bullets live ammunition um, uh, attempts to by the armored vehicles to run us over uh, and at the same time no one was retreating from our side the world watched in anticipation for 18 days as Cairo's Tahrir Square became the epicenter for protests against Mubarak's government. Once you stepped into Tahrir, you felt safe. At least throughout the 18 days, you felt empowered. You felt like you were in some sort of a commune 
or a collective where everyone is is determined um, and everyone is hopeful and everyone is is also fearful uh, for the future of Egypt. The embattled president refused to resign. He appeared on state television to give one speech after another, promising reforms and warning of chaos. But this did little to assuage public anger against him and his government. More than 800 were killed during the uprising. أيها المواطنون في هذه الظروف العصيبة التي تمر بها البلاد قرر الرئيس محمد حسني مبارك تخليه عن منصب رئيس الجمهورية. On the 11th of February, Mubarak stepped down, ceding power to the military. I was crying like a baby, you know, I was, I was very touched. I felt that uh, uh, I wished that my father was alive. I mean, my dad had already passed away uh, 10 years earlier. And I felt that we were um, about to achieve his dream of seeing Egypt as a, as, a, as a modern free country where people are not dying because of hunger or disease. People are not dying because of catastrophes that could have been averted easily if there was some crisis management planning uh, done by an efficient state. Uh, I was thinking of him a lot uh, on that day. In 2012, Egypt held its first free presidential vote, electing Mohamed Morsi of the Muslim Brotherhood. But just a year later, Morsi was overthrown and arrested in a military coup led by then Defense Minister Abdel Fattah al-Sisi following mass protests against his rule. The army then suspended the constitution and installed an interim government. When Morsi's supporters held sit-ins at Rabah and the Nahda squares, camping for weeks to protest his overthrow, security forces violently dispersed them, killing more than 900 in a single day. Human Rights Watch called it the worst mass killing in modern Egyptian history. Sisi became president in 2014 his government heavily cracked down on dissent, imprisoning an estimated 60,000 political prisoners. Human rights groups now believe repression in Egypt is worse under Sisi than it was under Mubarak. 2011 When Sisi got officially inaugurated as a president, I said game over. You know, that's the kind of thing that his Western allies, you know, I mean, need so that they can deal with him, you know, without any embarrassment. Oh, we have an elected president now, you know, so now we can sell him arms, we can sell him surveillance technology, we can do business, you know, I mean, with him, we can send our uh, billions to invest, you know, I mean, Egypt in all sorts of projects. I did go through depression uh, uh, for a year or two where I was completely depressed. In 2012, Mubarak was sentenced to life in prison for his alleged role in the killing of protesters. But after two retrials, he was acquitted of the charges in 2017. He died in 2020, a free man. The kind of repression we have now um, would make Mubarak and Nelson Mandela when it comes to civil liberties and freedoms. But I am not one of those who have nostalgia to the, to the times of Hosni Mubarak, because he is the reason, you know, why we are in today, what we are in today. He is the reason. He's the one who created this regime. He's the one who groomed those military generals. He's the one who created this horrific police state. Um, so I, I, by no means do, uh, am I like nostalgic, you know, to the times of Mubarak. I was detained and tortured by state security police when, when Mubarak was in power. Of course, I don't want to return, you know, I mean, to these days. We deserve better than those military uh, generals and their sons and their daughters who continue to rule us in a royal-like dynasty since 1952. We will not gonna get rid of Sisi anytime soon. Uh, I'm, re I'm realistic about this. But the reasons for which the January revolution happened the reasons are still there, which is repression and police brutality, authoritarianism, and the lack of social justice. 
and no military regime and no regime whatsoever that's going to come out of this current political formula is going to satisfy or solve these problems anytime soon, whether soon or later.